Hello, everybody, and welcome to Speak. Um, we're going to be reading this book during our unit uh, regarding revenge and forgiveness, and it's going to be very important, actually, because some really terrible things are going to happen in this novel, or already have happened. We're going to find out that it's uh, a flashback, actually, that the, the, the bad thing that happened to one of our characters actually happened before, um, and we are going to see throughout the, the book... We're going to go back in time and we're going to see exactly what happened and whether or not revenge or forgiveness is necessary or needed. Um, just so you understand, every assignment that I give you for speak, there are going to be a couple of things that you're going to need to do. First is you're going to need to define some words from those sections that we're reading. Also, at the bottom of the definitions, you're going to have to give me two original sentences. You can choose any of the words that you want. Remember, there'll be about eight or ten words that you'll define. You choose the two that you like the best, and you create two original sentences for that. The next thing you're going to have to do is answer a specific set of questions from those specific sections that we're reading in the book. And then after that, you're going to have to write a one-paragraph open-ended essay safe for me and please make sure you give details both from the book and examples from the book as well as details and examples from your life so that you can get full credit now one thing i do not i have not broken down these assignments by page numbers in the old days i would have done that but because we're going to be using different so like we're going to be using internet sources as well as novels so some people might be having some people might have the book at home while others might be using the internet version, um, the one that we're going to be given on Mac and Via by the library and whatnot. And I still haven't been given those versions yet, so I don't know what the page numbers are. So rather than do page numbers, I'm going to ask you to please do sections of the book. Now, this book has about 50 or 60 different sections, and they are labeled as chapter headings, not chapter one, but with names. So for example, you will see at the top of assignment number one, which in fact, I will show you right now if you give me a second let me present it to you uh present a tab hold on a second speak day number one so now you're looking at it right now uh if you'll notice at the top of this section in part one i have bulleted and bolded the two sections from speak that you are going to read for day one lesson so for your first assignment assignment number one i call it day one you're going to read first marking period welcome to merryweather high it's about two pages and you're also going to read the section titled our teachers are the best that is also about two or three pages when you are done with that you will answer these questions there are nine questions for those two sections and then after that i have a um an open ended paragraph that you're going to write a, a one paragraph essay, making sure you give details and examples both from your story and from your own life so that you can get full credit. So let's get started. So what we are going to do is read, I'll read it out loud, first marking period, welcome to Merriweather High and our teachers are the best. So let's get started, please. Allow me to go back. Let me stop presenting so you can look at my lovely face. Sorry about that, everybody, but I have to do it. Um, and let's start reading. So let's go. First marking period. Welcome to Merriweather High. It is my first morning of high school. I have seven new notebooks, a skirt I hate, and a stomach ache. All right, so it's her first morning of high school, which means this, this, this student, it's a girl, she's a freshman. Do you remember back to your first day or freshman year of high school, how excited you were? Um, probably one of the things that, I mean, as long as you were in the Union School District, right? If you came to Union High School new, then this wouldn't really relate to you um, because you didn't know anybody. But for those of you who grew up in Union and went to, you know, middle school in Union, elementary school in Union, then you have all these friends and all these people that you know. So one of the things you look forward to on your first day of school is just going and seeing everybody that you either haven't seen for the summer or haven't talked to for a while. Heck, there might even be some kids that you knew in elementary school that went to a different middle school because there's two middle schools in Union. Um, and you might be reuniting with them after many years. Hey, I remember you, OMG. So it's a very exciting day, right? You also get to meet all your new teachers and life kind of starts to happen that first day of high school, right? Everything kind of opens up. Um, it's a lot different than middle school. It's very exciting. Now, our student, our main character, she says she has a skirt she hates. Okay, she has a stomach ache. Now, why is that? Is it, you know, could it be some kind of female issues? Possibly. Or is it have to do with the fact that she's going to school for the first day that she doesn't want to go? Listen, the school bus wheezes to my corner. The door opens and I step up. I'm the first pickup of the day. The driver pulls away from the curb while I stand in the aisle. Where to sit? 
I've never been a backseat waste case. If I sit in the middle, a stranger could sit next to me. If I sit in the front, it will make me look like a little kid. But I figure it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends if any of them have decided to talk to me yet. I have to repeat that sentence. She said, it's the best chance I have to make eye contact with one of my friends if any of them have decided to talk to me yet. So why, ladies and gentlemen, are her friends not talking to her? What happened? Are we going to find out? Eventually we will. We just have to pay attention. Let's continue. The bus picks up students in groups of four or five. As they walk down the aisle, people who were my middle school lab partners or gym buddies glare at me. I close my eyes. This is what I've been dreading. As we leave the last stop, I am the only person sitting alone. Okay. So she was the first person to get on, sat on the bus, right? Is she the, yep, she's the first pickup of the day. So she picks a middle seat and she just hopes that somebody, specifically one of her old friends, will sit next to her and talk to her. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? How was your summer? But nobody comes. And that's what she was dreading. She was worried that nobody would want to come and sit and talk to her. She even says that other people glare at her as they walk past. Glaring, they, they give her dirty looks. So not only are her old friends not talking to her or looking at her, but everybody else gives her dirty looks. What happened? What did she do? What do they think she did? The driver downships to drag us over the hills. The engine clanks, which makes the guys in the back holler something obscene. Someone is wearing too much cologne. I try to open my window, but the little latches won't move. Not for nothing, but whenever you're on a bus, do those little latches ever move? You can like break your fingers to open them and pull them down. Hers won't move. A guy behind me unwraps his breakfast and shoots the wrapper at the back of my head. It bounces into my lap. A ho-ho. Okay. So they're throwing garbage on her and laughing about it. We passed janitors painting over the sign in front of the high school. The school board has decided that Merriweather High, home of the Trojans, didn't send a strong abstinence message, so they have transformed us into the Blue Devils. Better the devil you know than the Trojan you don't, I guess. School colors will stay purple and gray. The board doesn't want to spring for new uniforms. So listen to that. They're, they're not letting them be the Trojans anymore because they say it has to do with the whole idea of the condoms. Right, which is ridiculous, but that's what they're saying. Um, so now they're going to be the blue devils, but the problem is they still have purple and gray uniforms. We're finding out that this school district isn't um, necessarily the best and it doesn't always make sense. Older students are allowed to roam into the bell, but ninth graders are herded into the auditorium. We fall into clans. Okay, so let's talk about this. Now, our school, Union High School, has groups of people where everybody kind of hangs out together, but they're not really clannish or clicky. Clicky means that that's all they really hang out with and they don't really mix around with the other groups of people. Um, I think Union High School actually, everybody kind of does kind of interact with everybody. There's not really set clans or cliques. Now, when I went to high school in the late 80s and early 90s at Montclair High School, it was very clannish and very clicky. People actually did stay with their own cliques and they didn't really move around a lot. It was kind of annoying actually. Me, I was a click jumper. I, joined, I, I hung out with everybody in every group because I liked everybody. I wanted to know everybody, right? So let's find out what the groups are in her high school. We have the jocks. Now, this is coming from her mind, right? Um, I don't know if these people necessarily, these groups call themselves these names, but she calls them that. This is all coming from our main character's head. We're learning, her, we're hearing her thoughts. So the jocks are probably, you know, your sports guys, your football team, your soccer team. Now in our school, do our jocks, do our sports players hang out only with themselves? No, but they definitely hang out together. I'm thinking of the soccer teams, the soccer guys and gals. They're always together in a group of people. They just spend a lot of time together. I don't think they exclude other people, but they are definitely a lot, a lot together a lot. Then we have the country clubbers. You know, that makes me think of, um, if you ever saw the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, think of Jeffrey with the, the sweater around his neck and he does the silly dance. So basically rich kids. We have idiot savants. And idiot savants, that's a funny term, actually. That means someone who's not really that smart, but they're good at certain things. Like they're in reality, they're not a smart person, but they can remember things or they can draw really well. So those are idiot savants. She says we also have the cheerleaders. That's a group of people. We have cheerleaders in Union High School, but again, I don't think they really only exclusively hang out with each other. We're going to find out in this school that these cliques are very strong and they kind of you know, exclude other people from their cliques. If they don't stand up to their, you know, if they're, if they're not good enough for their clique, then they don't let them in. Human waste. 
I'm thinking that's like your druggies type of people, like your, your dopers, the people on alcohol and drugs, people who waste their time on things like that are always getting wasted. You know, those losers. Let's continue. Euro trash. Euro trash are, you know, European students that are here as like, you know, uh, on like a, a visit or whatnot. Um, we have future fascists of America. When I think of future fascists, I'm thinking of like skinheads, like, you know, guys who walk around that are like, you know, white pride type of people, um, you know, skinheads and all black and, you know, you know, they're just angry all the time, something like that. Big hair chicks. That's girls who have their hair very big. The Marthas. That's interesting. That's a group of girls we're going to find out later in this book that um, they follow Martha Stewart like the lady of the glue gun, you know, the woman on TV who does like, you know, projects and she does like, you know, she builds, you know, she sews things and cooks. So it's something like that. We have suffering artists. Suffering artists are, you know, you're, you're the group of kids who are, who are always, the artsy type of kids, like the kids who, who go to class in art. I know that we have definitely, I don't know if I'd call them suffering artists, but we have a group of artists in our school. And if you go around near the art room before school, you'll see a lot of them sitting on the, on the floor and they draw together and they share each other's work with each other. It's pretty cool, actually. Thespians. Thespians, we have a definite group of thespians in Union High School. Thespians are actors and actresses, right? The people who are in the plays um, and who put on the productions. And I know we have a huge group of thespians in our school. And they definitely, while they don't exclude people, you know, if you want to join the, the play, they will open it up and they will take you in and they will give you a shot. And if you're any good at it, um, but they definitely hang out a lot together. We have goths. Goths are those people who wear like all black all the time and whatnot. And then, of course, the shredders. Shredders, I would say, are like, um, you know, like your skateboard type of kids, um, you know, walking around with like long hair and ripped pants or tight jeans. And they have skateboards on their shoulders or around their arms. All right. She says, I am clanless. So she doesn't belong to any of these groups. She says, I wasted the last six weeks of August watching bad cartoons. I'm sorry, I wasted the last weeks of August watching bad cartoons. I didn't go to the mall, the lake, or the pool, or answer the phone. I have entered high school with the wrong hair, the wrong clothes, the wrong attitude, and I don't have anyone to sit with. I am outcast. There is no point looking for my ex-friends. Our clan, the Plain Janes, has splintered and the pieces are being absorbed by rival factions. So she had a group of friends and something happened and now they're not even a group of friends anymore. And they've gone and they've joined other groups. Now, our main character is not joining any other groups because she just said it. She's outcast. Nobody likes her. Not just her old friends, but also everybody in the school. Why not? Nicole lounges with the jocks, comparing scars from summer league sports. Ivy floats between the suffering artists on one side of the aisle and the thespians on the other. She has enough personality to travel with two packs. Jessica has moved to Nevada. No real loss. She was mostly Ivy's friend anyway. The kids behind me laugh so loud I know they're laughing about me. I can't help myself. I turn around. It's Rachel, surrounded by a bunch of kids wearing clothes that most definitely did not come from the East Side Mall. Rachel Bruin, my ex-best friend. She stares at something above my left ear. Words climb up my throat. This was the girl who suffered through brownies with me, who taught me how to swim, who understands about my parents, who didn't make fun of my bedroom. If there is anyone in the entire galaxy, I am dying to tell what really happened. It's Rachel. My throat burns. Look at what she just said. If there's anyone in the entire galaxy, I'm dying to tell what really happened. So based upon what she just said right there, what everybody thinks happened isn't what really happened. So everybody hates her, including her, her, her own best friend, her ex-best friend now she calls her. And everybody else in school hates her for something that didn't even happen the way they think it is. She wants to tell her what really happened. But her throat burns. She's so upset that she has an inability to speak. Have you ever been so upset either... Happy, well, normally it doesn't happen with happiness. Normally it happens when you're so upset, like angry or sad that you physically can't speak what you're saying. You have to catch deep breaths in order to be able to speak. That's what happens to her. Her eyes meet mine for a second. I hate you, she mouths silently. She turns her back to me and laughs with her friends. I bite my lip. I'm not gonna think about it. It was ugly, but it's over and I'm not going to think about it. My lip bleeds a little. It tastes like metal. I need to sit down. Oh my God. First of all, why is her lip bleeding? Look at back up there. She bites her lips. She's so upset 
that she bites her own lips so hard that they're actually starting to bleed. That's how upset she is. That's how much she wants to tell her friend what really happened, but she physically can't say it. Plus her friend just said she hated to her. To her. I stand in the center of the auditorium, a wounded zebra in a National Geographic special, looking for someone, anyone to sit next to. A predator approaches, gray jock buzz cut, whistle around a neck thicker than his head. Probably a social studies teacher hired to coach a blood sport. Mr. Neck, sit. I grab a seat. Another wounded zebra turns and smiles at me. She's packing at least five grand worth of orthodontia, but has great shoes. That means she's got a ton of, um, of uh, what do you call those things, braces in her mouth. I'm Heather from Ohio, she says. I'm new here. Are you? I don't have time to answer. The lights dim and the indoctrination begins. Now, two things to point out. Why does Heather from Ohio talk to our main character when everybody else is ignoring her or giving her dirty looks? Why? Because she's new in the school district. She doesn't understand that there's something quote unquote wrong with this girl. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with the girl. Everybody thinks there's something wrong with her, but they're not. They're actually wrong. She wants to tell them the truth, but she can't because she can't speak it. So another thing to point out is why does Heather think that our main character is new here as well? Why? Because she's also standing there alone. She's not running over to her old friends and people that she's known her entire life and talking about, well, what happened this summer? And who do you like? And that. You know, did you hear this new song? No, nothing. So she goes, are you new here too? The first 10 lies they tell you in high school. One, we are here to help you. Two, you will have enough time to get to your class before the bell rings. Three, the dress code will be enforced. Four, no smoking is allowed on school grounds. Five, our football team will win the championship this year. Now remember, she said these are the top 10 lies they will tell you in high school. So our main character is very cynical. Um, and she doesn't believe what people tell her. We expect more of you here. Six, seven, guidance counselors are always available to listen. Eight, your schedule was created with your needs in mind. Nine, your locker combination is private. And 10, these will be the years you look back on fondly. My first class is biology. I can't find it and I get my first demerit for wandering the hall. It is 8.50 in the morning. Only 699 days and seven class periods until graduation. Now, did I just hear this correctly? She's late to her first period. Why? It's a new school. She can't find her room. She actually got a demerit, which in their school is like a pink slip in ours. Do we actually have teachers in our school who would mark kids late on the first day of school? I would like to say no. Nobody would be that cruel or awful. But the actual answer is yes, there are. I have seen teachers yell at freshmen on the first day of school to get to their class on time. And I've actually pulled teachers aside and said, what are you doing? They're a freshman. How would they know where your room is? And they go, well, I think that it's important. They need to know that I mean business. And my response was, all they, need, all they now know is that you're a jerk. Oh, my God. So I'm saying it. I'm, I'm saying it now. Yes, there are teachers like that there. And I apologize for that. It's the first day of school. Of course, she's going to be late. Let's continue. Our teachers are the best, dot, dot, dot. Now, again, our main character's wildly sarcastic. She doesn't mean they're the best. She actually means they're the worst. Let's find out about her teachers. My English teacher has no face. She has uncombed stringy hair that droops on her shoulders. The hair is black from her part to her ears and then neon orange to the frizzy ends. I can't decide if she has pissed off her hairdresser or is morphing into a monarch butterfly. I call her hair woman. Hair woman wastes 20 minutes taking attendance because she won't look at us. She keeps her head bent over a desk so her hair flops in front of her face. Um, have you ever had teachers like that, guys and gals, that they're like afraid of you? They won't look at you. They won't talk to you. OMG, what are you teaching for? She spends the rest of the class writing on the board and speaking to the flag about our required reading. She wants us to write it in our class journals every day, but promises not to read them. I write about how weird she is. We have journals in social studies, too. The school must have gotten a good price on journals. We're studying American history for the ninth time in nine years. Another review of map skills. One week of Native Americans. Christopher Columbus in time for Columbus Day. Um, the Pilgrims in time for Thanksgiving. Every year they say we're going to get right up to the present, but we always get stuck in the Industrial Revolution. So now she's mocking the history of like the history classes. She says every year they just teach us the same crap, always the same stuff. We go to the next year and then it happens again. I don't know. I'm not a history teacher, but does that happen in your classes as well? Are you constantly learning the same things over and over? You're going to see here our main character is very cynical and sarcastic. Let's continue. We go to world. We got to World War One in seventh grade. Who knew there had been a war with the whole world? We need more holidays to keep the social studies teachers on track. 
My social studies teacher is Mr. Neck, the same guy who growled at me to sit down in the auditorium. He remembers me fondly. I got my eye on you, front row. Nice seeing you again, too. I bet he suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, Vietnam and or, or Iraq, one of those TV wars. All right, perfect. We have now read our first <clears throat> two sections, which were Welcome to Merryweather High. Um, and of course, um, uh, first marking period, I'm sorry, Welcome to Merryweather High, first marking period. And of course, our teachers are the best. Please make sure you have uh, answer all those questions. If you have any questions or problems, ask me. And then of course, <clears throat> get your um, open-ended essay paragraph done. And then have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. It was a lovely job. We will pick it up tomorrow. We will learn more about our main character. What happened? Why did they hate her so much? Why can't she tell people what happened? What was it so bad? We'll find out more as we move on. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.